Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It is so good to see you today and welcome you to St. John's. I am so thankful that you're present with us now as we are gathering to celebrate the birth of our Lord. Just a couple of announcements to share with you as we're getting started. And, and the first one is that this service that you are now uh, getting ready to participate in uh, is being videoed and it will be on our um, YouTube site and Facebook site tomorrow beginning at seven o'clock. This will be our Christmas day service as well. And then our service this evening, our nine o'clock uh, in the evening service is going to be live streamed. And so you would be able to go to YouTube and watch that service in its entirety, or if, um, if you've turned in early, uh, you can catch that uh, at another time on both uh, YouTube and Facebook. Um, communion, if you're not familiar with how that will happen during this COVID uh, pandemic that we've got going on, you will be communed as you are leaving the church, as you come out onto the portico. Uh, Pastor Mefford and myself will commune you. Uh, and then if you are wondering, are the, offer, the offerings and the ushers, are they going to all come forward and we're going to pass plates around? No, we're not going to do that. But if you've brought an offering and you want to leave that in one of the plates uh, behind you, they are on your way out. That would be fine. Again, I welcome you. Merry Christmas. It is so good to see you. And I ask you please now to stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Let us now confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. As you are able, please kneel. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lowly and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you. For the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people. With all who come to the manger, now rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. first reading comes from Isaiah, the ninth chapter. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail! Thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, 
the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea under the city of David which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Here ends the reading of the gospel for this celebration of the birth of our Lord. Well, it's Christmas with the year that we have had, you almost had to wonder if we'd be able to have Christmas this year. Last Christmas, COVID-19 was a topic of conversation in China, not in the rest of the world. Last Christmas, political unrest was a minor blip on a radar screen for us It was not rioting in the streets. Last year, Christmas at St. John's was still running under the theme that we use every year, and that is come home for Christmas. And the pews around you were packed. And this Christmas, 
This Christmas, everything's different. Life's different. You're different. I'm different. Tom Irwin, the professor of music at the University of Arizona, told a great story about a time he was attending a conference for music teachers in New York. While he was there at the conference, he purchased a talking metronome. Now, a metronome, as you know, it's a device for counting the beats in a song. It's a way to keep time. Before Tom and his son were boarding the plane for their flight home, Tom hefted this carry-on bag onto the conveyor belt where the security guards would check it. And the security guard's eyes widened, as you can imagine, as he watched the monitor in front of him. And he asked Tom, what do you have in that bag? And then the guard pulled out of that bag this strange-looking device, a six-inch by three-inch black box that was covered with dials and switches. And the other travelers in the line, sensing trouble, began to vacate the area around Tom and his son. It's a metronome, Tom replied weakly as his son, too, backed away, but his, his backing away was with embarrassment. It's a talking metronome, he insisted. Look, I'll show you. And he reached out and he took the box and he flipped a switch. But as he did that, he realized he had no idea how it worked yet. But as he flipped the switch, it went one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four. The metronome keeping perfect time. Everyone breathed a huge sigh of relief. So as Tom and his son are gathering their belongings and moving on, Tom's son whispers to his dad. He says, aren't you glad it didn't go four and three and two and one. <laughs> Last Christmas, life was moving along at a pace of one and two and three and four and one, and this year it feels a lot more like it's, it's going four and three and two and one. And that's why we need Christmas. Not only every year, but but I would say especially this year. We need to stop and pause. We need to, to stop and do nothing for just a few seconds and let this marvelous day and, and the night ahead of us and, and Christmas Day just, just wash over us. We need to pause so we can understand and remember what has happened. There's a, it's a wonderful little story about a dad who had who had encountered and dealt with just about all the commercialism of Christmas that he could stand in his household. So he called for a family conference, and he challenged his family to get more into the true meaning of Christmas and, and to not buy into, the, into what the stores and the Internet and the television were trying to sell. And he asked them to be more mindful of their time together and, and to limit their spending on gifts for each other and on their friends he talked about getting along with each other and, and establishing a loving atmosphere in their home. Like a high school coach, just before the big game, this dad brought his speech to a crescendo with this final rallying cry as he said, let's make this Christmas the best ever. And his second grade son looked up at him and raised his hand as he said, but dad, I don't see how we can ever improve on the first Christmas. Well, the truth is, humanity has tried, and we failed miserably to improve upon it. And when you think about it, we would have to fail, because how does one improve on anything when the hand and the Spirit of God Almighty is involved? On that first Christmas, the hand of God was on everything. His hand was on the heavens and on the earth. His hand was on the stars and the angels and the shepherds. His hand was upon the stable and upon that manger. And His Spirit was everywhere in the world because at that first Christmas, God had chosen to send His Son into the world as a tiny baby to redeem all humanity from the darkness of their sin. God chose to do for His children what His children could not do for themselves. God chose 
to become as one of us and take upon himself the weight and the guilt and the penalty of humanity's sins so that freed from the weight of sin, freed from the bondage to that sin and the devil himself, we could hope to be saved and know God's love eternally. By this time, I hope that if you are giving someone a gift this year, that you've already got it, you've bought it, you've wrapped it, it's ready to be given. But as we're sitting here, paused, as I ask you to be for just a few seconds, I hope that we understand that Christmas and the Christ child is how God has chosen to show us and to give us his gift of love. The gift of Christmas, the gift of God's love, came wrapped in swaddling clothes, born to a virgin, laid in a manger because there was no room in the inn, ultimately nailed to the cross to save us from our sin. And I wonder if seeing Christmas as the gift of God's love given to us, wrapped up in the flesh of a tiny baby, changes the way we experience this day, this night, and tomorrow. Because no longer is Christmas about what I can give you or what you can give me. Christmas now becomes what God has given us and then what we do with this gift of salvation. Now there is no monetary price tag associated with this Christmas gift from God because the gift he gives is beyond our ability to buy it or to pay for it. It is his gift of love, given freely, and all of us receive it, and all of us can unwrap it, and all of us can experience it. This gift is beyond our wildest hope. In fact, this gift of God's love is it's our only hope in a world in a time like ours. It is eternal unchanging, and yours. One Christmas Eve, two parents attended an early evening holiday party. And when they came home to the children that they had left in the care of their babysitter, they were pleased to find that the children had turned in early in their excitement over Santa coming. As the babysitter was about to walk out the door, she turned to the parents and she said, oh, by the way, she said, I promised Tommy that if he would stay in bed, Santa would bring him a pony in the morning. Merry Christmas. (laughs) Merry Christmas. It's Christmas. Christmas 2020. And God has given us a gift, a present. God has offered us his love. And Christmas is the story about that love. And we can never improve on God's story that's told at Christmas or that happened at that first Christmas. And yet I would encourage you to think about this because there is one thing we can do at Christmas to make Christmas better. Paused as we are with anticipation, with excitement, and with hope, let's not settle for a small Christmas or a little gift. Let's ask for more, expect more, hope for more, during this season. Because remember, we are in the presence of the King of Kings who has given us the greatest and the best gift ever given. Let us receive it as it has been given with love and hope. And let us open our hands and our hearts and ask for more. And we will find all our hopes and All our fears for all the years are being met in this Christ child tonight. Let us not settle, but ask for more. Merry Christmas.
Let us pray. O Lord our God, on this most holy Christmas Eve, we gather in worship to praise you for the gift of the baby Jesus, the gift of your Son, our Savior. Our Savior. Silently we listen to carols of the Christmas season proclaiming our faith, both in music and, and in song. Eagerly we listen to the words of the gospel, sharing the story of our Lord's birth. Hopefully we unwrap the gift of Christmas, the gift of your love, and pray for our lives to be touched and changed so we may know you as our Creator and our God. Open our hearts and our homes, making room for the Christ child to live with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have created all that is good and lovely and pure. As Christ was born, the angels sang and the shepherds came. And for an instant, the world stood still in praise of your glory. Help us to journey to Bethlehem in our hearts so we may hear and see this wonderful thing that you have done. Strengthen our faith so we may join our voices with the angels of all time who proclaim unto you a Savior is given. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, in our celebrations of the birth of Christ, the gift of your Son, remind us that now we can see your love and know joy and hope, no matter what we may see or experience. Christ was born into a world filled with darkness. He lives with us still in the darkness of this time. We pray that His light will scatter the darkness we know. Heal us of our brokenness, God. Fill the voids of our souls. Cast aside our fears. Renew our spirits. Assure us of your presence when we have wonders or doubts. And comfort us in our sorrows and losses, reminding us that the birth of Christ brings eternal good news. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, now let the peace of Christ come into our lives and this world. For it is into your hands, O Lord, that we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven given for you. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation shed for you.